Welcome to another video tutorial on the Ademco Vista 20P alarm system. Specifically, we will be covering star 182 in programming menu mode, which is titled Configurable Zone Type. For those of you that have followed me here for my first video on configurable zone types, this tutorial will show you how I programmed a custom configurable zone type 90 on my Vista 20P system to drive my garage door zone. If you have missed my first video, click on the link appearing on the screen to watch my tutorial on the installation, setup, and programming of a new zone on your system. Or forget about that video altogether if all you care about is what the heck a configurable zone is all about. Let's take a closer look at that now. We're going to thumb to page 4 dash 11 in our programming manual. On this page at the top we will see star 182. Taking a closer look at this field here we can see this is entitled configurable zone type 90. You might ask yourself why the reason for programming a zone type from scratch? Well let's take a look at the predefined zone types on our system. Thumbing over to page 5-2 we see at the top here the pre-programmed zones on the system. These are entered into star 5-6, which is zone programming menu mode. And they have several selections here of the most commonly used choices when programming. When one of these zone options does not fit into your plans for a specific zone, you are going to need to program a custom zone. This is done in star 182 by programming a type 90 zone. Let's scroll down to the bottom of page 4-11 again and look at this chart. The second selection on this chart, Vent Zone, is what we're going to be aiming to do today. Let's take a look at what this zone actually is. The manual states that zones set for this option are ignored if faulted with arming the system, but are protected if the zone is later restored. Example, an open window can be ignored when arming, but if the window is later closed, it will be protected opening the window again causes an alarm. Directing this now to our real world application of why we're going to be doing this, I'm going to be programming this custom zone type for my overhead exterior garage door. The idea being is that event zone, as defined, will allow me to arm the system with the garage door in the open state. I can then get in my car, pull out of the garage, and close the door. The door will now be protected on the system going forward until I later open the door or disarm the system. Thumbing back over to page 5-12, as you can see there is not one predefined zone type on the system that will allow us to do this. This is why we're going to be programming a custom zone type today. Let's flip the page now in the manual to 4-12. On this page you're going to see this spreadsheet entitled Configurable Zone Type Charts. There is 10 specific fields on this spreadsheet. Here is where I think Ademco and Honeywell did a poor job of nomenclature. As you can see, these are all entitled Entry 1, Entry 2, Entry 3, Entry 4, and so on up to Entry 10. These in fact have nothing to do with entries on your system, meaning a door or a window or the like. Ademco would have done a much better job naming these as Field 1, Field 2, Field 3, Field 4, all the way up to Field 10, because that's exactly what they are. They are programming fields. They have nothing to do, again, with entries on your system. Essentially, what you are doing with this chart is programming the zone from scratch. The zone right now does not know what to do under any alarm condition or any event on the system. You're basically telling the zone what it is going to be doing under any condition it might come across in the system, meaning an alarm, an open door, a closed door, a trouble, what it should do if it goes into an alarm, and etc. right down the line. Each of these 10 fields is going to specify exactly what the zone is going to do on the system when it is activated. Let's now take a closer look at the first field on this, Field 1 entitled Entry 1. Again, we're going to be identifying these as field 1 to make it a little easier to understand. So, field 1 is first asking us, response when system disarmed and zone is, and then there's basically two choices under that on the left. So, response when system is disarmed and zone is 
intact with an end of line resistor. Well, what that's basically saying is the zone is disarmed, or the system's disarmed, and the zone is showing it that it's closed. Well, in my book, that means that the zone should be showing up as normal. So we would enter in a zero for this field. Moving to the right, response when system disarmed and zone is open. Well, in my book, again, an open on a system or an open on the zone should be showing up as a fault. The system sees an open door, an open window, any open sensor on your system as a fault. So this would be a 12. Going down a little bit, we now see entry 1, or field 1 as we're calling it, equals EOL plus open. So basically what you got to do, very simply here, is take your value from column 1 that we just came up with. We said 0 for normal. And our value from the second column, which we said is 12 fault, that would be 0 plus 12. So field number 1 will give us a value of 12. Essentially, this is what we're going to be doing, going through each of the 10 fields on this sheet now. Okay, so let's dive right in and get into it. This is a spreadsheet that I've created that will better illustrate how we're going to be programming. The first column on this sheet, entitled Programming Field, is labeled 1 through 10 for each of our individual fields, or entry numbers, as Demco defines them. The second column on this spreadsheet will be pointing to the individual columns in the programming manual for the values that we select and the total column will be the adding of the choices that we made in the previous column it'll give us a total number this number is later going to be used in programming on the keypad so we've already completed field one so let's go ahead and add our values in from our first column we had a zero from our second column, we had a 12. 0 plus 12 equals 12. We're going to enter in a 12 for a total column on field number 1. Okay, so let's jump into programming the next field, field number 2. First question, or first column in field 2, response when system is disarmed and zone is shorted. If the zone is shorted, that should again show up as a fault. So we're going to enter in a 3 in the Choices Made column for Programming Field 2. The next column is asking us Auto Restore. Do we want this zone to auto restore after it has been cleared of its alarm condition? Yes, of course we do. So we want to put a 4 in this column as well. Vent zone. This is specifically why we are programming a custom zone. So as you can see, yes for vent zone is an 8. Enter an 8 in field 2 as well. Going back and looking now, we have a 3 plus a 4 plus an 8. That gives us a total of 15. Enter in 15 in the last column on this row for programming field 2. Moving along to field 3. Response when system is armed in stay mode and zone is intact. Well, the zone is normal. Exactly what we just said. It is normal. So let's enter in a zero. Response when system is armed in stay and zone is open. Well, if we're armed in stay and someone opens up a door, that should trigger an alarm. So put in a four. And that completes the program for field 3. Let's go back. 0 plus 4, or 4, equals 4. Moving along to field 4. Response when armed and stay in zone is shorted. Again, that should show up as an alarm. So let's enter in a 1. Bypass this zone when system is disarmed. We do not want that. Let's enter in a zero. Bypass this zone when armed. We do also do not want that. So enter in a zero. So we wind up with a one plus a zero plus a zero gives us a total of one. Enter a one in the total column in programming field four. Moving along to field five. Response when armed in away mode and zone is intact. 
again that indicates that everything is normal so enter in a zero response when armed in away mode and zone is open that should trigger an alarm so enter in a four that completes the programming for field five zero plus four equals four enter that into your total column in programming field five programming field six response when armed in away mode and zone is shorted that again should trigger an alarm enter in a one for this dial delay dial delay simply is when the system is shorted or the system sees an alarm condition it'll delay dialing central station you always want this this will drastically reduce your false alarms so we're going to enter in a four which is use this delay fault delay we do not want to use a fault delay so we're going to enter in a zero that completes programming for field six so we have a one plus a four which gives us a total of five enter in a five in the total column and programming field six moving along to field seven display faults do we want the system to display faults when they are occurring I'd say yes we definitely want that to happen so we want the system to show alarms when armed and disarmed we're going to enter in a zero here power reset and verification we do not need this for this zone let's enter in another zero and that completes the program for field seven so we have a zero plus a zero which of course is zero let's move along to field eight use entry delay one or two we want to use entry delay 2 for this zone because we set up a custom delay for this specific zone for the garage door. So we're going to enter in a 2 here. Next column, use exit delay. Yes, we want to have the exit delay for this zone, so we're going to have a 4. Last column for field 8, respond as an interior type zone. We do not want that, so we're going to enter in a 0. And that completes the program for field 8. So we have a 2 plus a 4 plus a 0, which gives us a total of 6. Moving down to field 9, alarm sounds. You see the selections here for this? Well, if we have an alarm condition, we want a steady bell and the keypad also to be a steady tone. That would be 2. So let's enter in a 2. Just a side note here, you do not want to use pulsing for anything but a fire zone. Pulsing is the, the signal that the system gives out for fire only. You never want to program a pulsing bell sound for a burglar uh, point on the system. Moving to the second column, use bell timeout. Yes, you always want to have a bell timeout. You don't want the bell going off constantly when there's an alarm condition. So let's enter in a 4. Respond as a fire zone. Of course we do not want this. This is not a fire zone. So enter in a 0. And that completes the programming for field 9. We have a 2 plus a 4 plus a 0. Which again gives us a total of 6. Let's move to the final field. Field 10. Trouble sounds. When we have a trouble on the system we want trouble beeps. Which is 2. Enter in a 2 here. And finally, chime when chime mode is on. I wouldn't see a reason why you wouldn't want it to chime if you have chime mode on, so enter in a 4 for yes. And that completes programming for field 10. We have a 2 plus a 4, which is, gives us a total of 6. And that's it. You navigated through this very confusing chart now. So let's go look at our spreadsheet now and see what we have. Looking at our spreadsheet here now, we have our total column. Our total column is going to be our numbers that we're going to use when we actually go into star 182 to do the programming. There is just one other tidbit of information about this column that we need to know. The system needs to know if you're going to be entering in a two-digit number or a one-digit number. And the way that the system deciphers this is by prefixing a two-digit number with the pound sign. So let's take a quick look at this column here. We have 
field one and field two both are two digit numbers. So what we're going to do is we're going to add in a pound sign for field one and a pound sign for field two, which will give us pound one two for field one and pound one five for field two. The rest of the numbers are all single digits. We do not need to do anything with those. At this point, let's move on over to the keypad and we will enter in these values into the system and we'll get our custom zone type 90 programmed. Okay, so we're over here at the keypad now. Uh, we're going to enter in our values into that field. The first step is we have to get into programming mode. We're going to enter in our installer code. Mine's the default, 4112. Then 800 gets you into programming mode. Keypad is going to confirm that by saying installer code 20. Okay, the field we're looking for to program here is in star 182. Keypad is going to say zone type 90 attributes, confirming that you are in that field for programming. And basically all it's going to be looking for us to do here is enter those numbers from the third column on our spreadsheet from start to finish. Okay, so we cannot stop. We're going to start at the first field, field 1, work our way all the way down to field 10. Okay, and just a quick note, remember we must prefix our two-digit numbers from fields 1 and 2 with a pound sign. All right, and also the system is not going to be showing us our entries after we make them on the keypad, so just keep that in mind. All right, so let's start. First field is pound one two, then pound one five from field two, then a four, then a one, then a four, then a five, then a zero, then a six, then a six, and another six. All right, those dings that we heard there at the end is just the system verifying that it took our information correctly and that programming in this field is complete. That's really it. It's going to move on to the next field, which we don't want. We're going to hit star 99, and that exits us out of programming mode, and we're done. So what you can now do is just take that field that we just uh, programmed. You can then plug that into my first video, which was the uh, programming of the garage door zone. So when it asks you for zone type, you're going to enter in uh, 90 for type 90, and that's going to point it to this field that we just programmed. I hope you guys found this video informative. If you got any questions or comments, leave them below. I'll try to answer them as best I can. And uh, as always, thank you for watching.